Well, listen, let me introduce our special guest, okay? Um, X Spurs, which you'll be very, very happy about. Is Hall that why you got your best suit on today? Spurs Hall of Famer. Spurs Hall of Famer. Oh, I'm coming, mate. I'm coming. Spurs Hall of Famer. Played over 200 games for Spurs, but I believe he's played a lot more than that. Okay. And I'm sure he's going to tell us that in a bit. 206. <laughs> 208, actually. Get it right. Um, FA Cup winner. 81, 82. UEFA Cup winner. Ledger, how does that make you feel? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like, I'm, I'm in last week's show again now. I'm sort of like getting a little bit, a little bit, little bit down depressed again. Yeah. <laughs> None other than Mr. Paul Miller. Welcome to the show. All right, mate, Paul, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Summer's here. Golf season started. You're looking um, very well. I always look well. He's always um, he's always on holiday. Isn't he? um, You're looking yeah, very and, well, my uh, friend. Yeah, so yeah, I was out yesterday in, on the golf course. It was nice with the boys, uh, the Spurs boys. We yeah. play a lot together and. Uh, Travel a lot together, and it's nice. And I'm, and again, looking forward to what you, you, you've uh, said earlier. Looking forward to the uh, last game of the lane on Sunday. Yeah, last game of the lane on Sunday. But before we talk about that, uh, I'm not quite sure if you got my message. I wanted you to bring your FA Cup medals in, just so I can have a look at one in real life. Because we've got someone in the building here that's been to a couple of cup finals, didn't quite get over the line. So I just wanted to see what it was like. <laughs> Be next to a winner. Uh, they're just gold and they've got, you know, winner, Oh, is it just gold? Yeah, it's just gold. That's see, mine are silver. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. Why is that, Ledge? Why is that? Why, Why is that? Why is your silver? The bottom of my cupboard silver. I don't know. Well, where'd you keep yours, Paul? Because his yeah. is in his pen drawer. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're in the bank. Uh, they're only insured in the bank. Um, yeah. it's, it's sad that so win, winners that, are worth that, something that's what a proper person does Ledge eh? um, winners they're worth something uh, no it's, uh, it's they're, they're good. my daughters have them and um, that's it so they're, they're, you can't you can't keep things out on the show anymore I don't believe they've got that's why that's why a lot of players for example at, at Spurs Steve Perriman and Pat Jennings have lounges there and have all their uh, memorabilia and medals there because at least people can see them yeah. and obviously the club can insure them properly mm. yeah. I mean I'm talking two people who've got quite a few medals there Perriman and Jennings, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so that's where a lot of, I that's, mean, a lot that's of players where mine are. <laughs> 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 <Well>, Newcastle, <laughs> Newcastle <laughs> did win a couple of cups actually, but it was before we were born, you got exactly. Yeah, <laughs> a long, long time way ago, before, yeah. way before. So, Paul, how are you? Welcome to the show, my friend. Listen, I know Zane's very excited to have you here. He phoned me about a week. I said, Look, this is what I'm trying to do. I want to get Paul on the show, Hall of Famer, Spurs legend. Listen, you played with a lot of big people, yes, um, in your time. Just want to have a little chat about your career. What was it like coming through? You're an East London boy, correct? I'm I'm actually born about 500 yards from here, at Whitechapel Hospital. Okay. I'm a proper Cockney. There's not many of us left. No. Um, Rob was a Cockney before right. he decided to go up north. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it's Cockney Geordie. Born and bred here. Went to school. Uh, I say school. Went to a good school. It was approved. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, two things at my school: football and fighting. I quite yeah. like those two things, so I got on. Yeah. Uh, again. Typical East End, I suppose, you know, it's two ways out, sport and crime. Yeah. And uh, luckily I played football. Um, I played for an uh, East End boys club called Semrab, which was which turned out God, quite a Sem few Rab. players you turned out for Semrab as well? Uh, yeah, and there was a few before me, like right. Butch Wilkins yeah. and Teddy Maybank, Ray Lewinson, who, who, who made it. But then myself and Jerry Murphy were our age, come out of there. Um, trained at Chelsea as a 10-year-old for a few years. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to talk about that because it's obviously, it's quite a bad subject. Yeah, a bit sore one. Uh, with a yeah. chief scout there at the time, it was it was quite handy. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I, I then did the rounds at 13 and went to most of the London clubs, went to United and Coventry and Ipswich as well and yeah. looked round. And, I, and then I decided to go to Tottenham and I, and I, I never regretted it. It was, a, it was a great place. I loved it the day I walked through the gates. And um, actually, I, I met Bobby Moore um, yeah. as, as, a, as, a, as a young man for a family friend and I said to Bob what, who should I sign for he's like you know you've got the big choice then it's yeah. like you know 12 clubs and he said if it's not just for money he said you, there's only two clubs in London you should sign for Arsenal or Chelsea yeah and I didn't I mean, really I liked Bertie and me when I met him later in life but he was quite a cold fish yeah I suppose I liked Bill Nicholson's honesty I'm not saying they were they were, they were uh, generous but he was honest and uh, I, I just liked the club and I liked the youth coaches and people around it and I just thought I'm going to go to Tottenham I like Tottenham and so you came through the youth system. What was yeah. that like coming through? Because you played a lot of long knee football, and you was doing, you was enjoying your time playing school football and everything else. Was yeah. that such a big sea change for you coming no, into no, that professional because, setup? Because I started, I played for Chelsea as a 10, 11 year old against other teams. Anyway, we played. So against you other kind clubs. of got used to that. Yeah, environment. and the thing is as well, you, 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 Robert, bear me out. This, you know how good you are. I mean, when I when I was when I was fifteen, I knew I was one of the best twelve players in the country. I knew that. 
Um, so you was always short on confidence? Yeah. yeah. Always. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you know the other boys in the, in the rest of the clubs and you know what, you know, and there's a lot, there's a lot of PR about me signing for Spurs in the papers and, yeah. you know, you know, it's going to, you know, you're a good player at the time and what you are. Yeah. I wasn't sure where I was going to play. I was, I thought it was going to be the defender, but then they started playing with different positions because they actually looking back on it now, they made, made me more... So you never went in play. as a defender? Then no, what? I did go as a defender. But they were trying to change me a little bit. You are left back, wasn't you, when you started? No, no, no. I just wore number three. That was why. And I, I was always centre-half. Um, left foot wasn't the greatest. Um, but it didn't need to be, did it? It's like, a bit like Messi. He ain't the right foot, does he? Um, not that I'm comparing myself. Um, so, no, I, I went there. The great thing about when I went there and... and um, the youth team I played in, um, we create we, we, we about seven of us actually end up playing in the first team, and you'll find that when we won won our trophies, the cups and the European one and the other success we had, two thirds of the squad were homegrowns, which had never happened before and then never yeah. happened again. Managed to get hold of the Argentinians. I don't know my luck, luck and judgment, but he got hold of Ozzy and Ricky, which completely changed our <laughs> so, club. So how was that? Well, what was that like? Well, it was unbelievable because we'd, you know, we we were last to learn. Obviously, everyone only, you know, it wasn't like today. The news, yeah, you know, yeah. You got soon, sort of, all of a sudden, they're coming in two days' time. These boys have won the World Cup, but it just changed the club. Where we'd had half a dozen journalists on a Friday afternoon come and talk, you know, talk about the next weekend's games. All of a sudden, now we had seventy-five from really? all over the world. We become an international club. Did they settle in okay straight away? Uh, yeah, I mean they they learned to swear quite quickly because yeah, that's English. always the first one they pick yes. up. Yes, uh, but I mean yeah, they, I mean they were they were fantastic, and obviously for Glenn it was like manna from heaven. He's got players who can he give that it understand and get it back it, yeah. from yeah, arguably the greatest cup final ever. Yeah, but I mean they they changed the club, and I think but what, so. What happened with Berkey? He signed those two. He then had this nucleus of youngsters coming through, which helped massively. Yeah. Um, and I suppose the icing on the cake at the end of the day is when he signed Crooks and Archibald as well to play yeah. who were proven goal I scorers I remember that yeah. double act yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know and, and Mark Falco as well great strike force and, and then we signed Ray Clements who had been at Liverpool and won everything and came down and started showing us how to win things properly yeah. And, 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 and an attitude, really. And probably increased our social uh, life as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool had been uh, yeah. quite serious drinkers. We didn't need a lot of encouragement, by the way. Yeah. And we'd go out a few times a week, which was we're together. And, and even today, we're still together. I mean, sa- on, on Sunday, it's a special day, obviously, the last day alone, they invited 65 players. But yeah. out of that 65, there's 16 of us who are there every week. There every week. There was 12 of us yesterday playing golf together. Yeah. We see each other all the time. Of course, I, I had friends in other clubs when I played. But I think Robert told when I played, I, I, I was another animal, I was another person. I would even contemplate, I remember, you know, talk to Noel Quinn and Charlie Nicholas that after, often we had a pu- drink on a pub, we lived, all lived locally in North London in those days. And they said to me, you had to smash me yesterday like you did. I said, well, Charlie, I said, all due respect, you had a red shirt on, I, I didn't yeah. know who it was, yeah. And that was Dalglish and Rush, who I see. Yeah. And, and, you know, the two at Everton, Andy Gray and, and um, Graham Sharp, you know, there was some great pairings. And by the way, the strikers were quite lively as well in those days. Yeah, they were giving yeah. some back, they, they don't guess, worry about yeah. that. All I'm saying is, I would never have dreamt of gone of, of looking at. Uh, I might have looked at him, give him a dirty look, whoever he was, to talk to him before a game. But I think that's where it's the di- game. I think it's disrespectful. To yeah. Be fair. And I and if I was a player in that, I would have a row with my own colleague if he was doing that. Sort of because you you, you yeah. kind of talk to be hard, like you said, you're from East London. Yeah. I, yeah I'm, I'm not saying I'm nothing not away. Saying hard, and you took you know, that into the game to, with you. Went to Repton as a boxing as kid. I mean, listen, in the, the day in East End, I grew up in it was it was you had to fight. Yeah. yeah. Because you know you, you know someone give if you if in any East End kid this is I would imagine if you went home and you you got a whack off someone you went home watch your mum and dad crying they say what, what did you hit him back. Yeah, and you would have got whack for not hitting back. Take him back. around his ass and make you hit him back, <laughs> yeah. yeah? So it was that sort of thing. And, you know, I, I, my family were, you know, that way inclined. So I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm far from being a hooligan. And, and um, as you, I hope Rob would say off the pitch, I'm totally not like no. I was a player. I didn't like me as a player, by yeah. the way. I was not a nice person as a footballer. Yeah. Yeah, I, off the pitch, I got wonderful hundreds of friends, a big, you know, lovely family of friends. And, and, I, and that's how I am. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I'm not. I wasn't nice on the pitch, and then again, I wasn't paid to be nice. Do you think? Was, do you think that Spurs side, though, if you'd have kept that nucleus together, you would have kicked on, and we wouldn't have had twenty years of mediocrity? Uh, I think. I think we would have certainly had a few more years of winning things. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been well documented. The manager came in and 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 it's just dilapidated our squad and and got rid of lots of players. Rightly or wrongly, it's been proved wrong now because we, you know, we didn't win nothing afterwards apart from when Terry did with Gaza and and, and, and Lineker. Which, if you'd added the players that you already had there, we probably would have done even better. But this is life. I mean, you can only go on what you've done. We had a good time. We had a great time. We enjoyed it together. Um, we're part of the, the best ever, you know, Spurs teams. Um, we're all still very close. 
and uh, you know we're still there every other week. <laughs>